Hey everybody, so we're back again. Now, today we're going to be covering Psalm chapter 8. Um, and again, we're talking about uh, the Trinity and the new creation. So, um, read Psalm chapter 8. Hit pause on this video and don't forget uh, the text and the questions are down in the comment section. All right, so um, after reading uh, Psalm 8, uh, I don't know if you uh, took the initiative to read the psalm surrounding it, um, but again, if we talk about context, Psalm chapter 8 seems a bit out of place <laughs> um, because uh, really Psalm chapter 8 is the only praise psalm. All the other ones are a bit... Mm, negative, <laughs> um, doom and gloom, uh, just, you know, not gnashing of teeth in general, not niceness. Um, but I think that it is uh, great that uh, Psalm 8 falls right in the middle of it. So when we're uh, right in the middle of uh, turmoil, of uh, pain, of suffering, you know, fill in the blank. Uh, there we uh, praise God. Uh, the praises of God never uh, ceases. So anyway, some background context for that. Uh, so a interesting thing uh, with this psalm is that on first reading it, uh, you would think that they're talking about uh, the creation of the world, uh, the creation of um, people praising God, uh, which is uh, partly what it's saying. So um, the uh, first place I'd like to start is with this idea uh, in, in verse 1 where it says, you have set your glory in the heavens. Uh, and when when you see that the your glory um it's it's that god's glory is just a part of it exists with his creation there are many psalms that uh, talk about how god's creation uh pour forth uh, praises to him. And we hear uh, Jesus saying the same thing in uh, his parade into Jerusalem for Palm Sunday. So creation itself uh, praises God. And then we go on to verse 2, and it says, through the praises of children and infants. And we don't usually think of children and infants uh, praising God, uh, you know, Magdalene just turned one and she can't talk, right? Can't form a sentence. Um, but yet the Bible says that she um, praises God. And, you know, how is that? Um, I would bet one in a way that we don't understand. Um, but God does. And then you have the fact, the pure fact that she is his creation. Um, just her being here uh, praises him. And then from her being, uh, you, you learn about the, you learn about um, infants, how they grow, how they learn, how they change. And uh, scientists are in awe of uh, what babies can do, how fast they develop, you know, all these uh, amazing things. And again, this is the idea of um, just the creation itself uh, as a testimony, as a praise to God, uh, their creator. Um, now we uh, go on to verses 4, 5, and uh, 6. And uh, these verses uh, on the first read would uh, sound like people, right? You and me, uh, which is in part correct because 
this is how God had set it up in the Garden of Eden, that um, that he had uh, put people uh, a little lower than angels. We still occupy that space because uh, we're above, uh, you know, the animals and plants and, and things like that. Um, and God had crowned Adam and Eve with um, glory and honor being made in his image. Um, and then, of course, verse 6 uh, put Adam and Eve as uh, rulers over uh, his creation. Um, so, uh, pre-fall, uh, this was Adam and Eve. But then, of course, we know that they sinned um, and the fall happened. So then we hear from uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and Hebrews 2 that these three verses are talking about uh, Christ. And um, there's uh, some, some nuances uh, with the uh, Hebrew uh, original text uh, that uh, help uh, clear up uh, that uh, as far as the how does this apply to Christ um, it's a little too technical for for me to get into uh, right now but just know that that's a part of uh, the the original uh, text so um, you've got this picture of of what the world was like uh, pre-fall and then Christ as the redemption so when we talk about uh, the Trinity, um, this is a part of the uh, redemptive work of Christ, the creation that uh, God made, uh, and also the, the Holy Spirit's uh, work in uh, the redemption, the bringing us back uh, to be called a child of God. Um, now, the, the other wonderful thing about this is you've got this picture of creation. And, you know, God made everything, and then sin interfered with that perfect creation. And so then God went back <laughs> and um, is making it all new again, will make it all new again. Um, we live in this... Uh, state of the um, here and now and then the the future, the then. Um, this idea that God has uh, redeemed us. Uh, he has uh, promised that uh, he redeemed us here and now through the cross. Uh, but then we also know we get redeemed again uh, at the last day, which is the same thing with uh, creation. <laughs> Um, so really it's this um, wonderful picture of uh, in this in this text of the praising of God's creation um, to its creator um, and also the redemptive work of the creator to its creation to his creation again <laughs> um, because that's the extent of his love for us so there you go there's uh, Psalm 8. Talk to you later. Bye.